right here, we have another piece of equipment that Heavy D brought back from one of his giant purchases. We don't know what it is, we don't know if it works, and we don't know what we're going to use it for. So we're going to go catch up with Jose. He's already started on this. See where he's at and see if we can get this thing running. Okay. Jose. Okay. Cool. So this is just a smaller vehicle to pull heavier trailers around so you don't have to use a truck, a forklift, anything no. like that. Mm -hmm. So it's a tugger. Yep. Okay. Now what are you doing? Try to run in it. Try to get it running? Mm-hmm. All I see in that box is you're trying, to make, you're trying to make honey right now. Yeah. Stop but trying to make to honey. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you want a honey? Whoa. What is that? Look at that. Look at that larva in there. How cool is that, Sam? Is that typically where you start when you're doing, when you're trying to get a vehicle start? See, okay. My electricals, are they all right? Let's check the batteries and go from there. Mm -hmm. That's step number one? Yeah. Then if that does turn on and it doesn't move, then you're looking at fuel lines and everything else? It's working good. It's working good at fuel lines. Try to crank it and see what's going on. You Why? see the battery? It's so tight. I don't know how to pull it out. You don't know how to pull it out? Uh-uh. Is it like sword in the stone? Probably. Like Disney? Dude, do you think it? Do you think it warped? Like it's a bad battery, so it expanded and yeah. it just press fit in there. That's why it's stuck in there. I think you need Maybe you push down the other one. Oh, hi, Alan. You've been waiting for me. Nope. We gotta start without you. Sore in the stone, wizard. Why don't you do it, man? Huh? I saw a movie about this one time. Do you want any help? Oh. <laughs> We're going to try to press this open a little bit to give us just enough. It's opening there. Nice job, Chris. All because of you. No. <laughs> no. Uh, do you think I need to uh, put it on the test charger? Yeah. <laughs> How do you not know yet? Because I haven't looked at it yet. Well, to use my gnarly powers costs you extra, and you guys aren't going to be able to pay for that. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Man, all these are these are explosion proof uh, switch boxes. All this stuff here. This was used in some sort of hazardous environment. Is what I is the only thing I can guess. So it doesn't create sparks and stuff like that. Uh, probably a place where the atmosphere could be combustible. Yeah, it could be anything. Uh, mines. Some inside some chemical refinery, but I, I can't imagine this being in any... Well, there's a sign here that says explosives. Number one. I, I'm i pretty certain this was probably used in a mine. That's what it looks like to me. This is a, a mine tractor. Explosive. Ah, I think this thing was used uh, for removing stuff in a mine. I think you're probably right. What? Do we have a model number on this? I really want to look up. Right now we're saying it's a tugger, so it's tugging yeah. stuff around, but it's not even uh, registering. All the numbers on the inside that Alan was reading me, I couldn't find anything on it. And uh, so we were doing some internet search. I was failing, but Alan found out what it was. Well, basically it's a uh, tow tractor, which I was pretty sure that's what it was. Um, the idea was I was trying to figure out what it was actually used for. And these were actually used for various things. They were used for aircraft, for moving aircraft around. Yeah. They were also used uh, for uh, material handling. 
the military purchased some recently from another company to move munitions around because uh, uh, they were some of them were set up to be explosion proof, so no sparks or anything, so it can operate into areas that might have uh, flammable gases or explosives. Probably because this has no military data plates on it, it was probably mostly civilian use because I tried to look for something on here that would maybe say it was used for on the runway for a, uh, for a tow, tra uh, tow tractor or a tugger, yeah. some people call that. Um, but since there's no, nothing military on it that I can see, it looks civilian. And just the way they set up this front section here where they have explosives and they have the, the lettering number for the number type of explosive and safety leads me to believe it probably came out of a mine. Well, let's get this thing started then. Batteries are out. Wow, there's a lot of diesel fuel in there. Let's see if I can feel it build, it's building up pressure. Alrighty. Wow. That's something you don't see, David. An explosion proof starter. Right there is an explosion proof starter. It's got a flexible conduit going to the main power wires from it. And that conduit is going where oh there's a whole bunch of stuff going to this box right here let's open this box up the hard part is because all the wires are inside So the main switch is on, so maybe we have a fuse blown down there somewhere. Yeah, it was not fuse, there's no power, Alan. There's no power in the fuse. Yeah. Uh, let go of that start. Push it. Now push it. Push, push the start. Right let go, push. No, nope. let's try the other side. Push the start. Nothing. This looks to me like a circuit breaker right here. That looks like a circuit breaker. That's working, that's working. That's working, that's working across. Wait, 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 wait. See, there's a starter. Take a look at how do I hook and jump it, uh, you know, bypass it. This is a starter? Yep. <laughs> and it's explosion proof, so it's, all the wires are encased in uh, electrical. Cut. Well, so we don't want to cut that outside and peel it open a little bit. Well, no, it's not that easy and uh, that's armored and uh, it takes a little bit of work to do that. What about the wire? I mean, so what I'm trying wire. to do is figure out where the wire is going, which I'm pretty sure goes in this box. So let me see that light for a second. Oh yeah, you can have a light. Which I'm pretty much thinking, it's going, okay. I'm pretty sure this is the, uh, the start wire right here. Cause okay. it's going through into one of the armored uh, wires going to the starter. One's coming out directly to positive. Do you want me to hold that light for you? Yeah, hold on. Okay, I can do that for you. Something else Just don't yell at me, Dad. I'm going to have to leave you guys here because I've been called for another <laughs> heavy rescue. Right here, I am taking a positive wire and making me my own starter switch, which is this wire. I might have to push the clutch down. Clutch down? <laughs> when pushing the starter. But let's forget all of that for a moment. Hold it. Let go. I'm not sure what's going on. I tried running power. I got a spark and then it stopped sparking, which is not good. Oh, that may have been. But that's really close. Could be the starter is bad, but, I, I, but it also could be we have a fuse bad. It loses voltage, which means there's a bad connector somewhere. Okay, probably circuit breaker. And then this right here, when I tried to jump it directly from the battery, it sparked and then now it doesn't spark anymore, which means that maybe the that has a problem. The starter. starter might have a problem because when I try to go from here to here, I lose power here, which means there's probably a circuit breaker or something uh, 
back there that's doing it. But starter in there, like Alan said, looks very explosive proof. It didn't look like any of the wires were exposed, but we just saw that some exposed wires. So that's what we're gonna try to do, get it started that way. Yeah. There's no power in the fuses in that box. We need to shake so many things in that. Need to check inside. Oh, that's vicious. And you're saying you believe the fuse is bad? No, it's not. Uh, you know, that thing is so dirty. And that fuse is going there. This is the fuse. What is this? Just attached for the fuse? Yeah, that's it for the this fuse. This is the fuse? Uh huh. But it, like it looks intact. Watch. So that's it listening. Yeah. That's why it's not touched the power in. That's why it's not that, uh, no power in that. Oh, we've got to tighten it down. Mm -hmm. oh. And fixing it because that's come up. It's so loose. What goes in there? That's go here. Um, clean that out, up. Clean out tighten it down. Tighten it and it's power now. I tried to start in it, but it's not good power because it's uh, so loose. So I want to tighten it, everything, put it back everything, and see the starting. Let's go or what? Is this going from here to there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got jump it. Why is it hot? I don't know. The metal's hot? Oh no. No, what did I do? Did you push the wire? No, you Why said push, push the wire all the way back in. But no, all the way back. You said push it in. I did what I... Okay, so the wire was touching? Yeah. Is it this connected dog? wire? Yeah. yeah. Is that ground? Go right there, Alem. Yeah. You see that? We have the fuse connected. Power, power. Let's see if we can get this thing started. This one? No. Oh, there you go. Make sure you get it primed. We might need some ether. Do you want me to grab a can of ether? All this shiz that's in here. Yeah, I don't want to suck all that crap down into the engine. You get rid of all this sh. You have a rag? Got a Mickey Mouse? Yeah, Playhouse. You guys see that? That thing started. Well, the bead's off. We gotta lift it up so we can get 
the beat on. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What? The tire. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's going to work. <laughs> you didn't just fill us up, did you? No, you didn't. Yeah. No, you didn't. Yeah. Did you really? Yeah. Look behind you. You really did? You want to set the speed? Yeah, but I think it's not going to set with it being as dirty as it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah. Uh, these things like to become little caves to little creatures. So let's get out just a little bit more. Oh my gosh. All right, got the tires pumped up now. All that's fixed. We got to take this on test drive. Alan, you want to hop in right next to me? All righty. Um, you're in charge of all the lights and stuff like that, okay? Uh, I don't know if they even do anything. Well, let's see. Any lights on? Yeah. Bumpy ride. <laughs> my my bone on a flat piece of steel and bouncing is just not the way to go. Yeah. So interesting enough, did a little research on this engine here, and it's a Chrysler Nissan. And looking at the whole frame, I don't think this is the original engine and transmission. The ones I've seen of these were gasoline and I can see it's cut out to make this engine fit in there. These were originally made from like 1965 to 1979, and then in the 80s they put a turbo on them. But they basically, it's a Nissan engine built in the old days, light duty, because Chrysler in the United States didn't have a diesel. So they put this in. So this is actually a very rare, hard to find engine. So there you have it, folks. Jose was just grabbing one of these machines from Heavy D's Rescue, and he's just been starting them. We're like, no, we want the people to see the uh, the will it start. We want to see how these things work, what we need to do to get this going. And so we grabbed Jose, pulled into the shop, and started working on it. All right, we recruited Alan for a little bit extra help, and within a day, this thing was running. So what's awesome about that is the original estimated value of what we were going to uh, sell this for was around 3,000. But now that we got it running and everything, we're at 10 grand. And uh, we're not going to keep the rat's nest in there. We're going to vacuum all that out. Um, maybe a little spritz of paint on there to make it look a little bit better. But that is a very awesome tugger that maybe we'll just keep here in the yard to move around these trailers that we have all over the place. Or maybe we sell it off and one of you guys can have it if you want it.